it's me, Tristan. I just wanted to share this verse with you. James 5, 14 through 15. Is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church and pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. This verse is encouraging to me because it reminds me to stop and pray and that the Lord holds everything in his hands and everything is going to be okay. I hope you know that everyone on praise team is missing getting to worship with you, but we are still a school family and we will all be together again soon. I hope you are spending some quality time with your family and I can't wait to see all of you again next year. Hey guys, it's Megan. Welcome to chapel. It is good to be with you. So last week we talked about Saul. This week we're going to start out by asking, what is your favorite animal? Go ahead, shout it out or say it to the person next to you. Mine is a panda or a corgi because they're just so squeezable. I just want to squeeze them. Okay, next. What is your least favorite? Like, what is a creature or animal that you would not want near you no matter what? Go ahead, share it to the person next to you or shout it out to me. Okay, for me, it is either an alligator or a bee or a stinky skunk. I think those are my top three. So today we're gonna hear about a dream or a vision involving different animals but it is more than just about the animals. It's something much more bigger. So we're gonna go look into the Bible and see what we know, what we find out. All right, so go ahead and take out your Bibles and open it up to Acts chapter 10, starting with one to 38. Here we go, let's follow along. At Caesarea, there was a man named Cornelius, a centurion in what was known at as the Italian regiment. He and all his family were devout and God-fearing. He gave generously to those in need and prayed to God regularly. One day at about three in the afternoon, he had a vision. He distinctly saw an angel of God who came to him and said, Cornelius. Cornelius stared at him in fear. What is it, Lord? He asked. The angel answered, your prayers and gifts to the poor have come up as a memorial offering before God. Now send men to Joppa to bring back a man named Simon, who is called Peter. He is staying with Simon the Tanner, whose house is by the sea. When the angel who spoke to him had gone, Cornelius called two of his servants and a devout soldier who was one of his attendants. He told them everything that had happened and sent them to Joppa. About noon the following day, as they were on their journey and approaching the city, Peter went up on the roof to pray. He became hungry and wanted something to eat. And while the meal was being prepared, he fell into a trance. He saw heaven opened and something like a large sheet being let down to earth by its four corners. It contained all kinds of four-footed animals, as well as reptiles and birds. Then a voice told him, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. Surely not, Lord, Peter replied. I've never eaten anything impure or unclean. The voice spoke to him a second time. Do not call anything impure that God has made clean. This happened three times, and immediately the sheet was taken back to heaven. While Peter was wondering about the meaning of the vision, the men sent by Cornelius found out where Simon's house was and stopped at the gate. They called out, asking if Simon, who was known as Peter, was staying there. While Peter was still thinking about the vision, the spirit said to him, Simon, three men are looking for you, so get up and go downstairs. Do not hesitate to go with them, for I have sent them. So he went down and said to the men, I'm the one you're looking for. Why have you come? The men replied, We have come from Cornelius the centurion. He is a righteous and God-fearing man who is respected by all the Jewish people. A holy angel told him to ask you to come to his house so that he could hear what you have, have to say. Then Peter invited the men into the house to be his guests. The next day Peter started out with them and some of the believers from Joppa went along. The following day he arrived in Caesarea. Cornelius was expecting them and called together his relatives and close friends. As Peter entered the house, Cornelius met him and fell at his feet in reverence. But Peter made him get up. Stand up, he said. I'm only a man myself. While talking with him, Peter went inside and found a large gathering of people. He said to them, You are all well aware that it is against our law for a Jew to associate with a visit a with a, or visit a Gentile, but God has shown me that I should not call anyone impure or unclean. So when I was sent for, I came without raising any objection. May I ask why you sent for me? 
Cornelius answered, Three days ago I was in my house praying at this hour, at three in the afternoon. Suddenly a man in shining clothes stood before me and said, Cornelius, God has heard your prayer and remembered your gifts to the poor. Send to Joppa for Simon, who is called Peter. He is a guest in the home of Simon the Tanner, who lives by the sea. So I sent for you immediately, and it was good of you to come. Now we are all here in the presence of God to listen to everything the Lord has commanded you to tell us. Then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts from every nation the one who fears him and does what is right. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel, announcing the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know what has happened throughout the province of Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil, because God was with him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Wow, that's a crazy story. There's two main people involved. Who is it? Go ahead, say it out loud. Tell someone next to you. There's Cornelius and Peter. They both had what? They had visions, they had dreams. What was Cornelius's? Does anyone remember? It was to go and get Peter and do what? Bring him back to his house. What happened in Peter's vision? What was involved? It was a sheet brought down from heaven. And what was on the sheet? Animals, reptiles, birds. And what did Peter, what was he told to do? He was told to eat it, eat them. Have you ever had a crazy dream? One that didn't even make sense? Peter's dream was not any dream. It was a special vision from God. God was using it to teach Peter something very important. Let's figure it out. So, Back in the day, Jewish laws said people should only eat meat of a certain animal that was considered clean. Because Peter followed the Jewish laws about what animals to eat, he wouldn't have eaten the animals on the sheet in the vision because they were considered unclean. But when Peter called them unclean, what did God say? He said, do not call them unclean because they are clean. He was trying to figure out what it meant when Cornelius' men came to Peter because at the time, Jewish people, like Peter, weren't supposed to hang out with non-Jewish people, also known as Gentiles, like Cornelius. So pretty much Peter and Cornelius weren't supposed to hang out together. Right? And that's kind of like the animals, right? Some are clean, some are unclean. They're not supposed to be together. But in the vision, Peter is supposed to go to his house, Cornelius' house. Have you ever been somewhere, dragged somewhere, you're not, you, you don't want to go, and it, you think it's su- super boring, and then it turns out to be way more fun than you expected? I think we've all had that moment, right? Peter wasn't really excited to go. I think he was a little nervous because he wasn't supposed to hang out with Cornelius, but he listened to the men that met him there, and he followed, and, and he knew God was telling him to go. So he went to Cornelius' house where there was a bunch of gathering of friends and family of Cornelius and all of this, right? So what do you think the big lesson that was taught to Peter? God was teaching Peter that all people are children of God and God loves and accepts them. Does God have favorites? No, he doesn't have favorites. He doesn't love people, certain people more than others. He doesn't love you more than me. No matter what we do, no matter what we don't do, he doesn't care about more people than others. He loves us all the same. He, this leads us to our big idea of the day. Drum roll, please. Jesus loves everyone, right? We know this. We know that he loves us all the same. That doesn't mean that we all are the same though, right? We all look different, we sound different, we like different things. But no matter how different we are, God loves each and every one of us. So, something to think about, maybe in your fridge, you might have white eggs, you might have brown eggs. We've seen them at the store, right? All different types of eggs. They're all different on the outside, but when you crack them open in the same bowl, right? They look the same. The inside's the same. What about a red apple or a green apple? Some of us like green apples more than red apples, right? Some of us red apples more. They're different colors on the outside. When we slice them open, 
they're the same on the inside, right? You wouldn't even know. Do you think that God cares more about the outside than the inside of a person? He created each and every one of us and loves us all. He is more concerned with who we are on the inside than the way we look. The way we look doesn't make us better or worse or more lovable or less lovable. He loves us no matter what color we are, where we're from, what height we are, I'm pretty short, and whether we're a man or a woman. He loves us all equally, just how we are, and how we should treat other people, right? How should we treat other people? We should show the same love and care to everyone, just as he loves us. So going back to some of our favorite things, what's everyone's favorite color? Go ahead and shout it out. You could have a few favorite colors, honestly. My favorite color is yellow. I kind of like that teal, like that mint color too. It's really pretty. What about your favorite dessert? Go ahead, shout it out. Again, you can have more than one. I love brownies. I love cookies. I love cake. I love all desserts, really. There's not one I don't really like. What about ice cream flavor? What if you went to Baskin Robbins and there was only strawberry? Like the whole counter, the long counter was just all strawberry. I mean, if your favorite strawberry, you're gonna love it. But I like chocolate chip cookie dough. That's my favorite. I also like chocolate and anything really chocolatey. But what if we all only had that one option, right? That would not be fun. We like scoops of different kinds. We like all the different toppings. Oh my goodness, just think about the toppings alone. Like frozen yogurt, if you only had one, that would be pretty depressing and be pretty sad. So creativity, diversity, all these things are so beautiful and the Lord has gifted us with that, right? But he wants us to know that he loves us all equally, no matter what, that we're created in his image, that he delights in us, that he loves each and every one of us and he wants us to do the same. So just as much as we get excited for all the different toppings or all the different animals, what if there was, you went to the zoo and there was only one animal? That's it. We like seeing all the different varieties of all of creation that the Lord created, but especially us created in this image. He wants us to know that he loves us all and we are to love everyone as well. All people, just as he loved us. Let's go ahead and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for creating us all uniquely and wonderfully and different. Thank you, Lord, that we all can come together and worship you, that we get to know that we are loved by you, and that we get to love you, love you and love others. Lord, you are good, and we love you. In your name, amen. Thanks, guys. Have a great week. Hi, guys. It's me, Tallinn. I hope you guys are all having a fantastic week. Um, I just wanted to share a verse with you that has really helped me through this really difficult time. So it is 2 Timothy 1, 7. God hasn't given you a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power and of love and a sound mind. And it just, it means really a lot to me because it, he's directly telling you that you don't have to be afraid, that we have a calm mind and that we can trust in him. So I just wanted to share that little verse with you. I hope it encourages you in whatever way. Um, just remember to always trust in the Lord and that he will help us through this really difficult time. So hope you guys have a great week. Bye.